Welcome to our new series, The Scientific Principles of Weightlifting. This is the first uh, video we're going to do. It's going to cover the principle of specificity. So specificity is the degree to which a training stimulus is related to the sport itself. Specificity is the framework around which all other principles are built. It should guide the decision-making process for all of our training decisions from exercise selection to total volume to intensity. Adhering to the principle of specificity means that training should guide and develop the underlying systems of the sport and the adaptations it make we make should be beneficial to the sport results. This basically means that we use specificity as our guideline for selection of exercises, selection of intensity zones, selection of volume for the athlete, so that those training results, the adaptations they make, actually benefit them in the sport. They have a high correlation. They're related to what we're, what we're doing in the sport. In this instance, we're talking about weightlifting. What are the underlying systems that we're training in weightlifting? The less specific systems, the more general adaptations we're making are still guided by specificity. General strength, flexibility, mobility, basic coordination. These things, while general, still have to fall under the guise of being specific or having uh, their adaptations positively impact the sport result. Training the basic technical skills or the more complex technical skills need to still transfer well to the weightlifting movements, to the snatch and the clean and jerk in competition. And then the actual sport movement itself, training the snatch and the clean and jerk with near maximum and maximum intensities in a, in a competitive environment or a competitive situation, mimicking the competition. The underlying systems that we're training in the sport of weightlifting. We're going to work with the less specific, more general exercises, more general means that have a lower correlation to the actual result, but still fall in the guise of specificity. Training absolute strength in general exercises that are similar to weightlifting. Example, squatting, increasing your strength of the legs, increasing the strength of the back, the use of deadlifting or pulling exercises, increasing the strength of the muscles of the shoulders and the upper back. These exercises are not necessarily directly related to the sport itself, but they must fall into the same category of being specific to weightlifting. For example, a bench press is going to be less specific to weightlifting, less related to a snatch or clean and jerk than, for example, a snatch grip push press or a drop snatch. Those exercises both contain some degree of general training for the strength of the athlete's upper body both bench press and snatch grip push press increase the strength, but the specificity of a bench press versus the specificity of a snatch push press is going to be lending itself to the snatch grip push press as having a more transference to the actual exercise, the actual competitive exercise. Training the technical skills and developing the specific strength of the competitive lifts using more specific training. Exercises that mimic the competitive movement or mimic portions of the competitive the competitive movement are what we use here to develop these skills, these specific exercises. For example, using things like partial variations of the snatch or the clean and jerk. Snatch from the blocks, snatches from the hang, clean and jerks with various positions, pausing at various positions of the lift, or multiple repetitions of snatch and clean and jerk with medium and light weights. Uh, these exercises develop the more specific competitive skill or more specific skill aspects of the lifts while still remaining less specific or not entirely uh, specific as the competitive exercise itself. They still have a high correlation because they fall into the category of specificity. They fall closely related to the snatch and clean and jerk, but not identical in nature. The final system we need to develop is improving the actual technical execution of the competitive exercise itself. This is the highest specificity system, the sport movement itself done under maximum intensity in near competition environment or near competition setting. This is going to include snatch to maximum, snatch with maximum weights, near maximum weights, clean and jerk with near maximum and maximum weights. The highest intensity, the most specific exercise we can possibly do. We can categorize the training into less specific, more general training adaptations increasing muscular strength, increasing the strength or the coordination, the basic coordination, the basic skills, and the basic motor qualities necessary for weightlifting. is going to include muscular strength, some kind of work capacity, 
explosive strength, some kind of jumping uh, and throwing exercises, and then some sort of muscular endurance exercises, general bodybuilding type movements, etc. These are all going to take place in the general phase while still falling under the guise of specificity. The basic categories of exercises that fall into specificity here, training that is so general it has no impact or will harm the actual outcome of the, of the sport form itself. So this could include things like long distance running, uh, high, high levels of endurance training, um, excessive bodybuilding work, things that would actually impede the results uh, in, your, in the snatch and the clean and jerk. The next category, which is slightly more specific, is going to be training that is not sufficient enough to improve the performance in the competitive exercise, but has an indirect effect on the athlete. This would include things like a moderate amount of bodybuilding, muscle building exercises, um, some flexibility exercises and mobility, where their effects are beneficial, but not directly on the sport form itself. They're beneficial in the sense that the athlete becomes more generally fit or improves their ability to train or improves the uh, ability to benefit from training. The third category of training is going to be specific training that supports the performance directly. This is going to take place with exercises that are mimicking identically the snatch and the clean and jerk or extremely close to that. Snatch with near maximum and maximum weights, power snatches, uh, and then other variations of snatching that may be directly related. Snatching without a hook grip, snatching with straps, uh, snatching without moving the feet, etc. And same for the clean and jerk. Directly related to the actual exercise itself or extremely close to that in an almost indiscernible way. What we're looking for with specificity is directed adaptation. What's important is that the exercises and methods used produce the desired adaptations we want for improvement of the competitive exercise. Choosing exercises that are too distant, while they may look similar in execution, or are but maybe differ in structure or differ in the actual performance or the adaptations do not actually manifest themselves in a way that benefits our sport violates the law of specificity. We're always looking for exercises and means that are as closely related when we're talking about specificity so that what we choose in terms of exercises and methods, we benefit from that. The correct application of specificity in the training process. Moving your lift selection, your exercise selection, or your training means selection from a less specific to more specific as you approach competition. We're going to decrease the amount of less specific work that is supportive in nature as we approach a competition, and we're going to replace that volume with an increase in more specific exercises that have a beneficial directed adaptation to what we're, to our sport form. It's necessary to remain within the realm of technical practice even during general phases because the technique of the exercises is highly critical to the success of the athlete. The lower the qualification level of the lifter, the more time they need to spend with technical practice and higher specificity exercises because this will benefit them in the process of learning sport form. Different exercises and different means are desirable at different phases of the training process. Exercises that are less specific in the earlier general phases of training are beneficial in that they produce some of the adaptations we're looking for. For example, high repetition back squatting is not directly correlated with the results in the snatch to clean and jerk, but it is beneficial in that increases in muscular size and increases in muscular strength along with extra work capacity will benefit the lifter in the latter phases of their training. Specificity isn't limited to just the exercise, but it also affects, is affected by the loading. Exercises that are done, while they may be the same structure of the actual sport, so snatch or clean and jerk, done with very light weights and very high repetitions, is still less specific because the actual intensity is not mimicking of that which we would execute in the competition. Snatch and clean and jerk for 30 or 40 reps at a time using 30% is going to be much further removed from a weightlifting competition uh, even though the exercise is the same as what we do in competition because that intensity is so low, it's not mimicked. Exercise selection that suits the training directive, more partial variations of the lifts, easier uh, lifts earlier allows us to perfect the basic coordination of the technical exercises while maintaining a very high volume of training. 
early in the training cycle because we're doing more general, less specific exercises and generally more volume because of that. We need to maintain the technical skills and this can be accomplished through the use of uh, more partial exercises that still mimic the technique itself uh, and mimic or have some component of specificity to them but are easier to accomplish because they maybe don't include the entirety of the exercise. Good examples of this are early in the training cycle we might be doing a lot of block snatches or hang snatches because we're only moving we're moving less range of motion the exercise is easier we can tolerate it better the athletes can tolerate it better because the exercise is simpler and the fatigue accumulated from the volume of general training would inhibit us from doing more specific near maximum or maximum snatches on a regular basis. Using variations can help overload specific musculature that needs to be strengthened. This is again where specificity plays a big role. We need to select exercises that are going to benefit us or going to benefit the athlete directly in their competition. Partial variations or variations on the snatch and the clean and jerk that improve technique are beneficial they still need to fall under the guise of specificity. Snatches with no hook and no hook grip and no foot movement are more specific and will benefit the athlete more so in the directed adaptations they make than snatch grip deadlifts, which are further removed, different intensity, different uh, actual structure of the exercise. While they both look very similar, one is gonna be more specific and it's gonna have a higher transference. All of our corrective exercises and all of our technical corrective exercises and teaching movements that we want to improve technique have to fall into specificity. We have to make sure that those movements and those exercises and those intensities transfer well to the actual sport form. And because of that, we need to look at these exercises through the lens of specificity and see which ones actually have a high correlation, which ones will actually transfer uh, and, and they must be related to the snatch, the clean jerk on a high level. Closest to a meet, developing the technical prowess and neural qualities and coordination of the actual sport form is the primary focus. It can be done only with the competitive exercises and extremely close variations of those exercises. Um, the loads and the intensity there need to be mimicking of what we will have in competition. So essentially maximum and near maximum attempts with snatch and clean and jerk and then very, very close variations. Again, things like power snatches, power cleans, uh, and other variations that are also very, very close. Key there is that the intensity is mimicking of the same intensity we have in competition. Snatching and clean drinking, for example, with very light weights in proximity to the competition will not prepare you to uh, perform with near maximum and maximum weights. An over-application of specificity, meaning a lack of variety or a lack of other, any other training means, simply doing the competitive exercise at maximum intensity for single repetitions, uh, you know, at, to the exclusion of all other training modalities is a mistake. This, this can create a situation where there's no further foundation uh, of general abilities or general qualities to build improved results on. Uh, while the general qualities don't necessarily have a direct relationship to the actual performance, they do have an indirect relationship in that an athlete who is stronger, flex more flexible, more explosive, will be able to perform better in training and will have the possibility and the potential to improve upon the results in the snatch and clean and jerk. An under application of specificity in training is a mistake as well in that training that is too distant from the competitive exercises for too long or for or comprising too much volume of the actual training process itself uh, will not produce direct adaptations. Spending too much time doing things like snatch grip deadlifts or clean grip deadlifts or bodybuilding exercises or high repetition squatting, high repetition bench pressing will not have a direct result will not improve the results of the sport form. The same can also be said for training intensities. Training with too light a weights for too long will prevent the athlete from making the direct adaptations to actually make heavy attempts in competition. If they don't train with near maximum and maximum weights, they won't have familiarity with it. They won't have the adaptations they need to actually have high results in those exercises. 
If you liked what you saw in the video, subscribe, hit the like button. Go ahead and head over to jtsstrength.com for more similar videos and other topics on weightlifting or powerlifting.